Good morning. Welcome to another exciting Monday Mindset meeting. I am so happy to have uh, Christopher Lawrence here, uh, my business partner, and we're going to talk about why you shouldn't have a business partner. So that's exciting and nerve wracking at the same time, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, just like to welcome you all um, to the Monday Mindset meeting. If it's your first time here, this is a great opportunity for you to um, check us out. We have tons of other previous recordings as well as um, the images on YouTube as well, the videos themselves, if you'd like to be able to watch that. So in the chat, please just let us know where you are uh, in the world for those who are participating live. And that way we could, Christopher and I know where you're at, as well as if this is something that is great for you, this is a great opportunity to to uh, share this with other people because there's tons of great information. We are going to make a little bit of a change to the Monday Mindset uh, meeting. So we'll talk a little bit about that at the end if we have some time today. Um, if not, we will definitely discuss it in the next uh, few uh, meetings going forward. Um, so my name is Coach Kalu. Uh, again, it's my pleasure to host with Christopher James Lawrence. Before we get to Christopher, let me just tell you a little bit about this guy um, that most of you who've been following already know because he is or frequent repeat co-host um, <laughs> for good reasons. Um, and so Christopher is the change coach. He spent nearly 15 years working in the corporate world with a variety of industries and companies um, in Calgary. His focus was primarily uh, in planning, strategy, leadership of change management and communication where he worked with the five generations now in the workforce. I think we may be at six, I don't know. Uh, Christopher is the founder um, and change, uh, chief value officer of Change My Life Coaching and also the co-founder um, of Change My Business Coaching as well as the Healthy Transformation. For those who checked us out a couple of weeks back, uh, he talked a little bit about that as well. If you think that he cannot do any more, he can because he's also a trainer and workshop facilitator as well as a published author of the book, Go Beyond Passion. Lots of information. Catherine's going to send that up a little bit later. And if you want to be able to check that out, you can. Christopher Lawrence, good morning. How are good you? Good morning. Good morning, Kyle. What is new and exciting? Oh my gosh, can we just jump into this for a second here? I want to get right to the topic at hand, why you shouldn't have a business owner. I've, I have created a list and <laughs> I'm ready to go. And first thing on the list is because you get the leftovers because I get stuck with the long weekend Mondays doing Monday Mindset meetings. <laughs> Absolutely. I think people will finally want to have a break, but this is going to be such an easy, fun topic. There's not going to be a lot of heavy thinking, which I think That's sometimes true. people now, as they're getting back into a routine, and you may talk about that a little bit later, as people are getting back in the routine, the weekends are becoming the weekends again, I think. And so with that is the long weekends are really truly becoming a long weekend. So I think that's what's happening. So I think people sometimes get to a point where like, okay, I, yeah, I need to turn off work. So I promise you, uh, still continue to listen because you are uh, going to hear some uh, lighthearted ways you should be thinking about as you think about business partner. But let's just jump into that, Christopher, because a lot of people feel to be successful, they need to have a business partner. And sometimes it's not even just being successful. Sometimes they don't do it alone. So there's a few things there I've thrown at you. And I know how much you love when I ask you four or five different things at once and not give you an opportunity right away while you're thinking about your answer. But go. Was that a question? I'm not <laughs> sure. Let me tell you something else. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as I have your captivated attention, folks, you need a business partner who can communicate <laughs> effectively. So not like what I, I can't? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Was there a question? In there? <laughs> no, I'm just saying there's two things that I know you were so busy thinking about your answer. That's why you probably didn't hear it, uh, which is some people feel one of two things. <laughs> Carmel, bear with us. Uh, some people think one of two things. Either they need a business partner to be in business for them to be successful, or two, they just don't want to start a business alone. And mm -hmm. so there's something to be said about having collaboration. So you know, what do you think? I, yeah, I think that the, you know, the benefits to having a business partner are, are there in the sense that, you know, they're, I think they're pretty obvious, right? So it's like, you're not doing it alone, you've got fresh ideas, you know, you each have different things that you're responsible for. 
Um, but I think business partnership actually in so many ways is like marriage. You know, you're going to spend a lot of time with this person. Now, and I don't know if I knew that when I, last time I was engaged. I mean, I thought I got out of that because I didn't want a marriage. So are you saying <laughs> to me, we got in a marriage? Is there yeah. a back door to this yeah, thing? Yeah, that's <laughs> it. We got into a marriage. Um, <laughs> there, there's so much to do with that. Yeah, you know, I think <clears throat> that is it, is that it's, Armo is, is crying. She's laughing, she's so, laughing hard. so hard. Well, I mean, and I think most of your audience knows this. We were engaged a number of years ago. We yeah. were living together and we were engaged and we were dating and we broke up and we thought, let's start a business. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a smart idea. <laughs> actually, yeah, actually, you you wanted me in your business, which, which I'm did. curious about because I think people we'll try yeah. to understand that because you had you had actually started the business i know we had talked about the business you know in the relationship and outside of the relationship mm -hmm. all that other stuff but you actually want to do the business because i was like uh no, <laughs> what, right? do I, yeah, no. what do i want to do business well for? here's the thing right i think you know despite the fact that our relationship did not work out the one thing one of not the one thing but one of the things that we had was that we could communicate well and this would be mm -hmm. the thing you know i think people think they communicate well when it's a honeymoon phase but you were not in this business as a mm -hmm. partner until mm -hmm. what was it two and a half years until about two after years you, yeah. mm -hmm. two years Mm -hmm. uh, until after you had already worked in the business. So, mm -hmm. and, and why bring you in? Well, it's like, this is the thing. I don't, how long were we broken up for Kyle before we went into business partnership? Uh, I think about two, three years. Oh no, it was more than yeah, three, that. Four. Well, I think it was, no, it was more four. than that because the business Five? is eight years old. I've been with business oh, for eight years. Right. Well. So I guess, so, I guess. So it would have been five, six, even years. A, a couple years before that. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think, <clears throat> yeah, it was five or six years, I think, yeah. before, um, before. When we broke it up. You know, after then. we broke up. And so, you know, the truth is we had already seen the best and worst of each other. And I think that people sometimes in business partnerships, they get together, they get excited, and they sign up for something. Statistically, you and I know this called business partnerships don't last. Right. They're worse than marriages. Like marriages, the divorce rate is about 50%. Yeah, uh, business partnerships, mm -hmm. I think, is much, much lower for lots of reasons. I mean, most businesses don't make it past five years. Greater than 80% of businesses are, are done within the first five years. And then the next five years, so 10 years, is closer to 90 or 95% of those businesses are gone. Right? And you have wow. to, like, people hear that stat and they, you have to think about, like, what's in, you know, well, what's included in that? Well, it's every kind of business. That's home-based businesses, that's registered businesses and corporations. So, so most of the, you know, the, the person who wants to, you know, sell candy out of their house, you know, like, or bake cakes or, you know, and sell those out of their house, right? Like those mm -hmm. businesses are included too. So most businesses mm -hmm. don't make it. So certainly business partnership adds another level of complexity. And, and I would just come back to that comment around communication. You know, you, you and I <clears throat> could always communicate. You know, our breakup was very amicable mm -hmm. until you tried to take full custody of my puppy. Um, <laughs> and so we had to do joint custody. Yeah, according to the Queen's bench, yes. <laughs> to this day, we still have joint custody <laughs> of the dog. Um, we we co-parent. Um, you know, there's a lot of couples that could learn a lot from us, actually. <laughs> uh, that should be the other book that, that you write. <laughs> Yeah, it should be. We should write Go that beyond together. the relationship. That's right. right. Yeah, but, but communication is key. And I know that sounds so obvious. And I, and, and I want to go a little bit deeper into that if I could, Kyle. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, when people are saying, oh, yeah, communication. Okay, great. Thanks, Christopher. I'll write that down as point number one. And it's like, actually, that is the point. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and maybe that is the only point. You know, without effective communication, without being able to have difficult conversations, mm -hmm. um, you and I would not be where we are. Kyle, how often do you think we have we have productive conflict in our in our office just between you and me? If not daily, every other day. I would agree with that. Yeah. And then sometimes it's unproductive too. 
Right. That's usually when you start it up. Usually yeah, when you're I don't being usually unreasonable. Do, yeah. I don't yeah. usually do that. I mean, yeah. When you're Catherine, unreasonable. Yeah. I mean, we're bad, lucky we can't see you know, The rest see of the Catherine. team puts up okay. with it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Hmm. You know, so, anyway. <laughs> so, you know, so I think, I, I think that is the thing is that you, you do have to actually learn how to disagree with each other. And I, th I think that's something that you and I do quite effectively. I know when the kids have been watching us, that's sometimes what I call the staff when mom <laughs> and dad are fighting. Um, when the kids are watching us, it can be a little bit uncomfortable, you know, but we always circle back around. And, and so I think by the time we had entered into a business partnership, we had known each other for the greater part of 10 years and had mm -hmm. worked with each other in one capacity. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, our very early interactions <laughs> were tumultuous, actually, <laughs> like right from the beginning. You know, there was yeah. <clears throat> there was tension and stuff like that right mm -hmm. from the beginning. And so I think that we've we've had a long road to be able to communicate through, um, you know, and, and come to terms with stuff. And and uh, I, I think you know, if communication is first on the list, then trust is second on the list. You, you gotta, you, you've gotta trust your, your, uh, you know, your business partner will do what they say they're gonna do. And you trust them at the risk of knowing that they may not. Right, now let me, cause if you said we're gonna go a little bit deeper in this, let actually go into it. Cause the people, Everyone get that intuitively, right? You've heard it, you know, communication's key. It's for every relationship. It's for all these other things. Those things are definitely important. Um, and that's, 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 that's not the issue. I think people struggle with the execution of it. And so if you can go even further, what would you say how to, you know, uh, communicate? Because, you know, from my perspective, you know, when we talk about having conflict is to be able to say, because there's times I don't want to tell you certain things because I know what is going to happen. I already mm -hmm. know you're going to lose it. You're going to get stuck mm -hmm. somewhere. You're going to be mm -hmm. somewhere else. But, you yeah, know, I have true. to sometimes push through that. I mean, I think I learned that lesson even more so on June the 18th, uh, 2017. I believe I learned that lesson even more so. I was traveling at the time, something happened, and I just said, you know what? It was my fear to deal with the other things, but I'm not doing you any favor if I spare you from that. That is the thing, right? And we hear this happening all the time, right? Is that you know, is, is that business partnerships, one's trying to spare the other, one's trying to do something for the other, but they're not actually being forthcoming with what's happening. Mm -hmm. We ran into that difficult situation. And we've mm -hmm. run into it a couple of times, mm -hmm. you, you know, where, where we're, you know, trying to spare each other. I think that people, you know, when they get into it, it's always that honeymoon phase or they see something in somebody else that they don't have. Right. And so they sign up for a business partnership. And I, I don't think that's the wrong reason to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that there's ways that need to be tested and trialed because think about it for a second. So my spouse and I, we've been together for eight years. We don't have a joint bank account. We just don't run our finances that way. Mm -hmm. You will always have a joint bank account with your business partner. Right. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. right? You will always have a joint bank account with your business partner. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have to know how to have these difficult conversations. If you got divorced from a relationship uh, because, you know, you couldn't talk about money or your money spending values weren't the same, Bingo. then you should not get into a business partnership mm -hmm. if you're not prepared to talk about money. If you avoid difficult conversations around money, if you avoid difficult conversations around somebody's great idea that you actually just don't like and you can see why it doesn't work, you shouldn't be in a business partnership or you should tread lightly. Right. And, and it's just how you even communicate because you can support each other yes. by being able to have that. Now, one of the things that I know has worked really well for us and people often ask us is, you know, how does that still work no matter what happens? Because, and we're a little bit different only because we're so intertwined personally as well, right? Our families it's are so connected. Our family. or, right. So there, there's so many other things. And I don't think we have that time today to get into the PowerPoint presentation that we've had to do for so many years. Um, but it's so intertwined. But if you come back to the business piece of it, we often say you need to be able to create an environment so that way you can either have these conversations and it has to be regular, right? Because mm -hmm. if it comes to a point where it's just, um, okay, Christopher, I have to talk to you about something. 
then it's automatic like what? What happened? Did it? But if it's a part of your routine to collaborate, communicate, and sharing opinions, and I think that's the thing when we talk about trust, if you cannot engage into trust if you can't say, I'm going to walk into this room knowing that I, it may not go well right? Mm -hmm. It's when you still walk into that room and know that there's a possibility, but you have to be mindful that no matter what happens, I know we are stronger than this thing that we're talking about or this experience or these situations we're going. Would you, would you agree with that or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, I think sometimes it is about getting through to the other side. Every, every relationship goes through, um, tumultuous times you know every relationship does i think with um you know like i, I look at my own marriage that you know there's probably been in you know eight years maybe two or three times where it was like hmm we're we gonna we're gonna get we, are, are we gonna be able to get past this right i would say for you and i kyle in our business partnership it's been the same yeah. you know there's been you know two or three or four different circumstances where it's like hmm are we going to be able to get past this? You know, and, and it's about continuing to come back at the ta to the table, continuing to challenge the conversation, not each other, not challenge each other, but mm -hmm. challenge the conversation to move into more and more productive spaces. And certainly it comes from actually being able to speak from a place of needs. This is what I need. Mm -hmm. This is what I need. Are you capable of providing that to me or willing? Yeah. And not only does you need, what I think you do really well, I mean, and, you know, our team can let us know that as well. What I think you do really well is because you know me so well or know the situation, not only me, but you also know self so well mm -hmm. that you can actually triage the conversation in real time in front of me. Right. And we've seen that we're like, okay, here's what I'm thinking. It's not what I want to say, because I know you're going to think it's this. So let me just say that again. Right. Yeah. And allows that. And to be honest, when you do that, sometimes it allows me to know that, OK, I know he gets me is hurt because sometimes isn't that the story people start telling themselves in that business is like, oh, my God, I'm not being hurt. I, he doesn't think this. And he did it. And we start that mm -hmm. story, which may not be true. But yeah. I think when you say I want to say this, but I don't want you to think it's about this because it's more about this. Right. And I think you can only have that when you engage someone. If you are holding that back and telling everyone else about it, then that's a problem. So if you don't want to engage people, you don't want to be that vulnerable people. And trust me, that is rich coming from me using that word vulnerability. Uh, but if you don't want to be vulnerable, you shouldn't be in, you know, a business partnership, really, right? Well, I think that's it, you know, and I think you, I think you said the the exact thing there, which is that we 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 leverage. Um, you know, it's funny, if you, if you follow the work of Brene Brown, we leverage a phrase that she talks about often. We say, the story I'm telling myself. Mm -hmm. so, so there are times where I've walked into Kyle's office and I've said, the story I'm telling myself is that this isn't going to work because. The story I'm telling myself is that you are doing this deliberately. The operative word in what's understood in our office is when we say the story I'm telling myself is actually about me. It has nothing mm -hmm. to do with you, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that's one of the ways that we kind of move through this. Kyle, I was wondering if we could talk about a few different ways that people could kind of think about, you know, like if, if they were thinking about getting into partnership, different ways of doing it. Do you think? Yeah, two could things. Could we that? talk about that? And those who are in partnerships right now, that may, could we give them one or two things that they can do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So, so I've got a couple of things here. I think if you're stepping into business partnership or thinking about it, do it as a trial. Use the word trial in front of it. Kyle's actually the one that taught me that word. You know <laughs> what? I'm willing to trial a joint venture with you. Meaning yeah. let's work together for three to six months to try it out. If mm -hmm. that works, let's do another three to six months and try that out. And if that works, let's try another three to six months, right? And then at some point in time, you might see, okay, this is a relationship that we can make work. Mm -hmm. You have to get past the honeymoon phase. You must get past the honeymoon phase to be able to have difficult conversations. And guess what, folks? If you're in a business partnership and you avoid difficult conversations, if you're mm -hmm. one of those people, it's time to either learn to master difficult conversations or you need to get out because you're not capable of being in a business partnership. It's really simple. 
it's like, I, I'm going to use the metaphor of sales. If you don't like sales and you don't like selling, you shouldn't be in business. Period. Totally. Yeah. Why I, do you I say that? I know why you say that. I dislike sales tremendously, mm -hmm. but I found a way to do it that works really right. well for me, that feels authentic to me, and it feels like I can give more mm -hmm. than just asking for a hard sale. But right. I think that this is very much the same way. You should not be in a business partnership if you are not capable of or interested in uh, having difficult conversations. It is impossible to be effective. It's impossible to be effective. Because you are selling. There's some point, either you're selling your culture, you're selling your business, selling products, selling service, selling self. Like there's, there's always components of it, right? But it doesn't have to be. And that's uh, the same with business partnerships. So the yeah. sales part was just the metaphor mm -hmm. for this same concept mm -hmm. of you can't avoid difficult conversations and have a successful business partnership. Like there's so many people that are so afraid to have difficult conversations. And actually, it's not the fear that's the problem. It's the execution. Like you can be afraid and take a step anyway, right? So, so you know, from, from my perspective, if, if you're afraid of having difficult conversations or you, you are a difficult conversation avoider and you don't want to learn how to do it and you're in a business partnership, you should just wrap it up. You should wrap it up. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Absolutely. And for those who are, can I share three tips for those who are in business partnerships right now? Um, that's maybe want to make sure it works or what have you. Are you okay with that? If you have something. Oh, girl, I don't know why you're asking me, girl. I don't know why you're asking me. <laughs> for those who are in, those, those who are. Know, he's been walking on eggshells this week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is what you should do. Number one, admit your mistakes. Number one, admit your mistakes. Yeah. Number two, ask for help. And number three, apologize, right? Yeah. Because sometimes the apology, because sometimes people will say that to me, it's like, well, I don't, it's not always about guilt. And I, Christopher, you and I know we can go on because we, we deal with our own individual practices with clients about that word apologizing. In the simplest form, at least I'm going to offer you guys, is sometimes apology is not just for you. Sometimes it's for the other person so they know that you've heard them, that you've recognized what it is. So that way you can move on. Because sometimes, and I'll use myself as an example, the apology to me happened so quickly in my head that it doesn't come out and I've already moved on to the next thing. And the other person, I'm not even going to look at him, and the other person, yeah, Kyle. The, the other person is still <laughs> stuck there because they're wondering, well, did he get it or didn't he get it? Does he understand what he did or did he not understand what he did, right? And that's where sometimes business partners get stuck in those areas. So what I'm saying is sometimes you have to, and don't just apologize for, okay, fine, sorry, fine, sorry, here you go, sorry, right? It's just to say, listen, I'm sorry and here's why I'm sorry, right? Here's what comes with it. So that way it's- Acknowledging the other person's perspective, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's that's like, it's like, you know what? From the way, you know, it might be from, you know, from the way that you're observing this, Kyle, mm -hmm. or, or from what I know about you, I can see how you would interpret it that way. And that makes right. perfect sense. And so I'm sorry, because obviously, you know, I wouldn't want that to come across that way. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like, you're not sorry for their perspective. You're sorry for the circumstance. Right. And, and of course, you know, these people, so they would, mm -hmm. they, you know, you would know that they would interpret something a certain way or even if you don't, it kind of eases the tension to use phrases like that. Yeah. And, and you might have a business partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you might have a business partner. When you say that, they're maybe still so geared up and still ready for the fight that you may have to just say, okay, I guess we're not going to leave this anytime soon. Because mm -hmm. that, that just may be what they need to do. Right. It's just like when you, you, you build this thing up, you call customer service something and you're ready for this fight and said, absolutely, we'll refund you. And you're like, eh, what? Because <laughs> you were like geared up and you had all these adrenaline and sometimes you just have to say, okay, no, I hear you. You know, one of the best things that Christopher uh, taught me that has helped me uh, with him, because I said to him, how do I know when to move on? Like, how do I know? Because there's times where, you know, he may go over a situation again because he wants to hear it or he wants to make sure it's been sold. And one of the best lines he gave, guys, this is golden. Please write this down. I am telling you, you can use it anywhere you know, we're and getting this recorded. Like this is recorded, right? So like oh, you're going to say okay. this in infinite, like forever. Okay. 
<laughs> so here's what you need to write down. When someone is ruminating or someone is, you feel is repeating themselves or someone you feel that is saying to you the same thing again or someone is not able to move, this is what you say to them. This is the line that Christopher gave. Let me just make sure my microphone is on. How much time do we have? Okay, make sure we have time. Say to the person, blank, do you feel I have heard you? That is the cue for them to say, oh, uh, well, here's what I really want you to make sure you know. And here's my, fine round, my final round about it. And sometimes I'll say, no. Okay, can I tell you what I heard? <laughs> right? Because then it just lets them know, okay, because that's the piece where, because sometimes they're looking for blood and you're just looking to move on. <laughs> right? well, it's, all, yeah, it's also <laughs> an opportunity. I hate you so much. Um, it's also an opportunity. <laughs> For you to say, I believe that, I, that you've heard me, but I'm not sure you've understood me. Mm -hmm. Right, Kyle? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting. Not, not that we're hanging our dirty, dirty laundry out to dry here, you know, but, but what I would say, you know, what I, what I would say is that this is kind of what it looks like sometimes, you know, is, it, is that there are these situations that come up all along the way. This is why I'm such a big fan of the joint venture opportunity. Mm -hmm. One of the things, um, uh, we, Kyle and I have done a number of joint ventures individually with other individuals or groups, and sometimes together with other individuals or groups. And you know, we've, we've got a situation like that right now, right? Where, mm -hmm. where um, there's a person who, uh, you know, who, who avoids, difficult conversations they they don't like exposing the fact that they have flaws or vulnerabilities and you know they you know they're in that situation and it's just like every single one of those has a shelf life right, right? and it's like you know i think because our value systems are so strong uh between kyle and i you know both as individuals but also as a business partnership mm -hmm. even if the money's good we'll walk away right we'll walk away it's like i don't care if the money's good you know, I think, I think maybe Kyle, it's because we saw so much separation in our parents and right. stuff like, you know, like, right. you know, and that kind of thing. I think that, you know, for us, it's just like, you know, money, money ain't worth issues. You know, and, so. and, and, and so what you just said, Christopher, is I think is a whole nother mindset meeting is because how do we react so differently, right? You know, a lot of times we were told it's a situation usually, but it is about you as an individual and your values because you have two people, you know, a quick example of this is, you know, say that your father was an alcoholic and then you have two kids and one kid becomes an alcoholic and you're like, well, how come you're an alcoholic? It's like, well, because of my situation with my parents and, you know, with my dad. And then the other guy, he's not alcoholic alcoholic doesn't even touch alcohol at all you're like how come you don't drink alcohol he goes oh because of my situation with my parent and because of my dad how did two right so it's not always just oh well you know he grew up in that situation that's just what it is and blah 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 sometimes it's about how your values connect with those different situations because you can go on two different ways anyway uh just wrapping up christopher i think this is amazing there won't be a q a today um however you know we're always going to be accessible Catherine, just put up your information Catherine, just throw that up again if you want to reach out to christopher or myself please somewhere, whatever you're listening or watching this, there is a link somewhere. Just click on this. If this is something that you really like to do, please come back next week. We do have uh, Jenna Kirk with us, Employment Law during COVID-19. We're going to get right back into business. What does that mean for your business? Her husband was on last week, uh, Craig Turvitt, and he was brilliant. So we already know she's going to be even better. So uh, no knock against Craig. <laughs> Craig, if you listen to this, Christopher typed that. He told me to say it. Um, I did but... <laughs> not tell you to say that. I love those two. They're amazing. And let me tell you something, when it comes to labor law and immigration law, Jenna is fierce and extremely knowledgeable. You're going to want to hear what she has to say. And it looks like I'm going to be hosting that one, it, doesn't it, Kyle? You're going to be out of town. Yes. And you, and you want a day off. <laughs> so. just one just one just one but that's amazing christopher that that's brilliant if you're able to host um jenna lucked out i don't know how she got so lucky but um yeah christopher is going to be well, taking it's just going to be the best christopher. monday mindset meeting that any any of y'all have ever been to you're not you even going to believe how amazing it is if you do it better, it's going to be really hard for me to finish out until November. 
<laughs> it's going to be really difficult. Anyway, we'll talk more about that. Uh, maybe Chris will talk more about the Monday Mindset uh, next week. I know we promised that we were going to maybe get to it this week, but we'll definitely talk about it for next week. Thank you all for participating. Um, and thank you so much. I uh, wish I could have heard of the two of you years ago. Oh, that's so amazing. Uh, Karen had a really great point. Maybe I'll just end on that. Karen just sent me something really private here. And she said, Kyle, thanks. Um, thanks, Kyle, to you and Christopher. Wish I would have heard uh, some of this two years ago. Take care. That is a great. I mean, that's why we we're doing this, right? Because we know people are in that in different places. So thank Me you too, so much. Me too, Karen. For Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing this. Uh, everyone, have a fantastic holiday. Have a fantastic week. Uh, we'll definitely see you next week. Well, um, I'll listen to you guys next week because Christopher is going to be taking the reins next week and to go from there. Take care. Thank you again, Christopher. So grateful to you.